All right, now we just started recording. I really um, encourage you to ask questions. If you can directly ask a question by unmuting the mic, that's the best way. But in any case, if you don't want to talk to you, you can even type your question in the chat box. No problem, but I may um, overlook these uh, messages, text messages. Right. <clears throat> Do you see the screen now? We are going to talk about the functions of the board. Uh, functions of the board here refers to the board of directors. Board of directors. Learning outcomes differentiate between alternative board structures. Then different board structures are there. We must be able to understand them. Um, need to discuss some balancing roles or the roles of directors in performing their duties as board members. There are various types of tasks. We can identify those tasks in its own name and tasks can be um, divided into two as well, two broader categories called performance tasks and conformance uh, tasks. Um, then um, describe the functions of the board of board committees because all those things are familiar to you. You associate with board committees, at least you have heard about these, their authorities. We need to describe their function and mainly you need to ask questions as why um, do corporations need boards? Um, and why does a board need committees? Like rational arguments behind are the real learning and not the number of committees, name and all. So basically, they, they, they are useless because if, we, if, we, if someone wants to know about functions, you can simply type this thing in the Google, you know all the functions, need not to listen to any lecture. Evaluate delegating uh, board function to management. The need or the task of delegating the board functions to management and its um, implications should be discussed. Then the corporate transparency. Transparency is a concept um, and it has become a buzzword that is being discussed or buzzed within business communities, but do not know whether with a good intention or bad intention, but lots of um, instances are there in the corporate world, the transparency is simply uh, disregarded, not respected, though we claim that we want transparency. Um, basic nature of functions of board of directors, it's a fiduciary nature first, so that has to be understood. You may have heard about this word before. You may have learned these under theories and philosophical underpinnings about um, boards. 
what, what, what do you mean by can someone tell me what is meant by fiduciary um, action? Why it is fiduciary? Okay, later we will discuss why it is fiduciary. And before that, what is meant by fiduciary? Yes, anybody? Sleepy? <laughs> How do you understand the word fiduciary? Because if you really understand fiduciary and why it is, purposes, all those things, actually this lecture can just finish in 10 minutes. That, that is your learning. If you really learn this nature of fiduciary action of shareholders, why such actions are needed, that means you know very well the functions of boards and its complications, implications and other things, significance as well. Yes, I don't hear. I encourage you to talk. Yeah, anybody? I don't want a formal definition about fiduciary. How do you understand this word? Or what is expected from uh, um, board of directors to perform a fiduciary du uh, duty to shareholders? Yes? No response? Or have you heard about this before or not? I just wonder because sometimes, please um, cooperate and let, let me know. Other, I do not know uh, whether you have learned this because you are supposed to learn at least uh, to have heard about this word. Otherwise, I need to explain in detail. Then, uh, if not, I can start from that onwards. But I do not know your level of understanding. You, you can even talk in singular. You need not to type. Can someone speak up? Acting in good faith. Sorry? Acting in good faith. I didn't get you. Uh, so acting in good faith. Okay. Acting in good faith. Hmm. So it implies something. Yes, good. Um, so we, we, we can start up the discussion based on the acting in good faith. We act. So you, me, and others, your managers, lecturers, so they, they act, not act like acting, right? They act um, when, when you do day-to-day -day tasks, your personal things, common things, right? All these things are action. Generally, everyone is supposed to do the actions in good faith, but there are instances that they may do these things with bad motives and all these things. Then you, there should be something like when you say, yes, act in good faith in this structure. What is this structure? Cooperation. So cooperate. Director's action. And there should be chances of may leading, may, may lead to something else, may not be in good faith. So why do we need to have good faith? Some susceptibility may be there, isn't it? Some susceptibility may be there. Lots of things are there. They, they come into this particular scene to achieve specific tasks. That is why they are supposed to act in good faith, not only in good faith, but in a trust, trustworthy manner. So they need to maintain that trust. You, you, your directors are supposed to be trustworthy in simple terms. We forget about the functions and all these things. Trustworthy towards who? Shareholders. 
why do we have to talk about all those things if they are really trustworthy in the real actions they may not be trust even though they are trustworthy actions may really impair their trustworthiness you appoint guardians to do something for you you they do something else like in case of government right so very um uh, um typical example is the present government so either we hold a different political ideology or different opinion about governments economic policies and all those things it is a fact like very um uh, how to say a special characteristic is seen in this government throughout our history the governments were elected by people to do something like um, to run the country for 5 years to fulfill their aspirations sometimes people thought that okay this government would develop economy uh, develop our economic life and bring prosperity to us by bringing their economic policies sometimes they uh, cast their votes Uh, again just to uh, topple down a previous government likewise different reasons had been there in throughout our election processes some government also just came to implement some policies for example in 1977 they came to implement open economic policies so there are so many implications of open economic policies and the capitalism and all those things so that is something else but they asked for the mandate to do this some governments or some political parties are there by the name of the political party their identity is also there with respect to what kind of economic policies are going to or are adopted by them but this government is very special due to the prevailing situation there was a tendency like maybe fabricated one we do not know but finally the this government like before coming to the government the, the party was able to win the hearts of the general public as a guardian that the fiduciary action is there they were able to win the trust of the majority um as a guardian for you in what terms in terms of bringing or establishing the national security in developing the national economy in expanding uh, uh, the production basis in increasing export income and protecting uh, 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 public resources and safeguard the uh, environment safeguard the society social just so they were the slogans and the uh, uh, front uh, runners of the election campaign but within a short period of time maybe in couple of months not only that they could not fulfill all those things but also they were forced they really were compelled to a situation to act something totally against contrary to what they said instead of protecting national properties and assets they are the leaders to sell the assets instead of promoting national production and the creating wealth so they are the people of giving opportunities to their henchmen known people aids to uh, uh, earn lots of money and they talk about the one one country one law but they interpret the law uh, as they want just to favor the uh, known people so it's a huge contradiction why i just took up that example because that is also connected to this fiduciary role fiduciary is not only in good faith not not only thinking but also a trustworthiness you need to maintain why we have to talk about this trustworthiness or the good faith especially when we talk about corporate governance and government or any other institution the main reason these institution especially corporation corporate public company 
structure gives an opportunity for individuals or some uh, uh, agents to make use the power vested upon them to maximize their own interest at the expense of others. That is the danger. That danger is intensified again owing to the nature of that body, that the corporation, limited liability company. Think of the company where you work at. Most of you guys may be working at limited liability company, need not to be necessarily a public company, public quoted company. Being a limited liability company, limited liability company compared to any other forms of organization, it has a unique characteristic. That unique characteristic is the legal personality. It is a legal person. This legal person has all the rights that you and I have. In fact, this cooperation is given enormous opportunities to do whatever they want without having any problem. Why? That particular legal person is a fiction. There is no such a person, even though it is legally recognized. Say Bank of Siloam, HNB, John Keel, Hamas, any bank or manufacturing organization, Tiba Brothers, or multinational companies. They are fictional realities. You can't see the company. What you have, you have operations, you have individuals, you have employees, all those things. But this particular fictional reality, when it comes to a public company, even limited liability company need not to be, even maybe private limited liability company, you can do any damn thing in that the name of that particular company and escape. But there are instances, board of directors, so can be helped so later. We will talk about that is why board of directors are important. Because in the name of limited liability company, you can invest some money and engage in any damn thing, unethical things, or something uh, uh, which is highly debatable and incur huge losses to environment, society. You disrespect the mankind employees and end up with losses. Finally, you can say bye-bye because you are responsible only to the capital that you have invested. That's it. So danger is there. So therefore, this fictional organization has enormous capacity to do whatever they want. In true terms, in the world, if you carefully analyze, if you want to do some research, think of analyzing these fictional realities and the power of corporations, power of corporation decision-making, management uh, decision-making, accounting and all, even politics, economics, if you want, you can build up an argument. In real terms, actually, this entire world is now being ruled by not political parties or governments, but by big corporations. Huge monopolistic, or oh, the group of companies, they have their own networks. So oh, you better read more and try to understand why I just told you these things to get a preface uh, for the understanding of the functions of both. Without understanding the nature of a corporation, if you by heart read out this function, there is no need. There is no use. That is there in the internet. First, you have to understand this company has an enormous power. In exercising that particular enormous power, agency is created. Within the agency, agency can be, power can be used by those who run the company to gain more benefits. Who runs the company? Basically, any business, whoever who wants to do a business, you say that, so your capital, you start a business, you run the business. Owners run businesses. So that is the normal nature, isn't it? If there is any contradiction, with, uh, different understanding, please let me know. So please speak up, stop me and speak up or post a question. So normal under general understanding, if you start a business, you are the one who, who runs the business. In a way, then there is a matching. Even though you may do something bad, but of course, 
there is no disconnection your capital your business your action your capital you run the business and you associate with all these operations the power that you have you use for yourself in running the businesses in line consistency can be seen you got it but when it comes to a limited liability company even private small scale limited liability company yes you own you run you manage yes but there is a possibility this can go to a multinational companies large corporations public corporations in the world only handful of corporations are controlling the entire world as i told you so when operations expands your scope of operation expand what happens owners all the owners will not have the same power of exercising the management and that may also not be practical assuming that in a public corporations there are 10000 shareholders or even 1000 shareholders if everyone tries to manage the business run the business assuming that you have adequate business knowledge what will happen so many conflicts fights and so you will never do the business it's like um, too many uh, cooks spoil the soup it's not practical therefore in the corporate world owners normally take the side of total liability by definition they they become investors they simply investors who runs the business are the managers some shareholders may be there in the managers maybe major shareholder selected shareholders are there in the, as the managers if you do an analysis of sri lankan companies public companies so major share shareholder is in the management for sure they manage but not all shareholders but if you take money from all the shareholders and you manage there is a tendency that you manage in a way that you like or in a way that will give you more benefits to you and not to others you got it that that is the way so um this this situation creates a big issue those who run the business may run it in such a manner that is uh detrimental to the interest of other parties we call stakeholders among them shareholders are considered to be very significant and very um vital why they are the people they give you money so in order to bridge the gap between the way the managers run the business and way or the the way the shareholders expect the performance of the business intermediary parties are um right not recommended like imposed uh, through enactment by law so likewise there could be so many mechanism so board of directors in essence therefore is an intermediary mechanism to balance this agency conflict they come in between shareholders and managers why managers as ordinary people as uh, economic theory suggests may try to maximize their own interest not the shareholders interest but it's not fair because shareholders have invested money and there is a greater chance that these managers can take lots of money from the investors and general public and misuse it like in the case of government government also exactly the same scenario you are the shareholders general public are the shareholders your company is the state that is sri lanka is the company right you are the owners of this country so country is there for a fictional reality like in the case of company sri lanka so everyone likes so if i say that uh, sri lanka is a fiction you may wonder you may be angry with me but that is the reality because there is no such thing called sri lanka sri lanka is only a fiction created in your mind but yeah it's a territory 
in that territory people are there people live lots of things are happening that's it all right so in fictional reality sri lanka is your company that is your state you are the owners you owners give or empower managers to run it who are the managers they are the government that is the government right government takes kind of different roles later you can relate it even you if someone wants to do a research of comparable research of this mechanism with corporate governance to run day to day operation there is a large oh, number of public servants they are employees in a way board of directors can be added maybe cabinet likewise different structures are there i'm not going to talk in detail but i'm trying to compare and relate then you can understand you guys owners have appointed the government as your agent to run sri lanka your business your company in a better way but willingly sometimes you do not want to have good control mechanisms you are not worried about this fiduciary role the, the, the role is fiduciary why trust should be there they they are required to do this because they are going to deal with large amount of money by the same way board of directors by essence intervenes into the operations of a company to act as a fiduciary for shareholders in good faith to maintain the trust what's the trust they tell us directors no worries government tell you don't worry we will take the state and develop the country for you your future would be better your gdp per capita would go up in future prosperity would be brought into your life you would be happier than yesterday same way directors say tell you no worries these managers will run the business well we will look after we will check we will oversee we oversee what they are really doing what they are really doing but in a practical situation there is there are lots of cases so some of them may more likely this board of directors tend to get together or uh, uh, join hands with managers and do this dirty job that is the reason why we need to talk about this corporate governance in depth so we need to know the functions so then we can question them whether they do these functions or not like this okay so if you have any question you can ask um, i just gave you brief introduction about the realities behind a corporation this within fictional reality and the importance or the significance of the board of directors any question think of uh, developing a particular research idea for your dissertation this is a typical unitary board structure then board of directors come above the ceo and under ceo the management team is there so those position shown in blue color dark and light blue are the managerial positions managerial position so therefore this part is the management normally management is headed by chief executive officer and with the similar capacities different um, positions are seen in the corporate world or even sometimes chief um, financial officer or chief operating officer cfo coo ceo are used with the same meaning no matter who uh, who it is uh, it is the head of the management board of directors are there to oversee what the managers are doing or so the management headed by ceo is doing in order to head and run or to provide the leadership for the board of directors the leadership of the steering steering wheel of the board of directors is given to the chairman chairman so chairman now you can understand before moving on to the functions of the board in good corporate governance why is it so important to have a good governance system 
to separate these two jobs what are they office of ceo from the office of chairman of the board why office the board is there to oversee if both positions so officers are given to same person that means you oversee what you do in our rural colloquial saying is nadu thamuduruange badu thamuduruange right singular we say that nadu thamuduruange badu because you are the person who oversee what you do you check yourself right so but there are arguments about this later we we can talk about the, this issue arises when the operation of the corporation is expanding huge if it is a public company of course we need to separate when it comes to a private if you have too much delegation of power or having to people manager ceo and um, chairman that also may create problems so there are goods and bads theoretically we can't give the, res uh, the responsibilities of both officers to one person in a case of public company and as in other third party observers internal um, uh, audit committee that also comes within the board of directors there are different committees later we will discuss audit committee also plays a very critical uh, role by providing more information for the board of directors to uh, fulfill their performance and conformity uh, conformance roles right structures of boards therefore each country or territory has to decide its corporate law rules regulations guidelines and all these things uh, by and large throughout the world you may see some similarities in the corporate law but with minor um, changes it's up to the country and some board structures or some countries or territories have specified um minimum number of directors in sri lanka also maybe the one director company also can be formed but it is private but if it is want to be a public company number of um directors so increase if it is a listed company requirements are different so likewise so required number of directors vary depending on the nature of your company um then again you need to specify how the, the members are elected to the board and members are even removed and uh, so all those things not only appointed removal and these kind of things and how frequently board members meet but there is no point if you appoint board of directors to oversee what managers do if you do not meet if you do not discuss if you do not analyze what managers do my goodness there is no use so you you can do another research if you like um with respect to um board members or the um involvement or contribution of board members in boards so sometimes they may go to board keep their mouth shut and put uh, simply put their signature and take their allowances so that's it so i don't know so that that could be one possible scenario um likewise frequency what like we need to know what they really do as well whether it performs executive or supervisory role so this is another uh, um important area as i told you as i told you even though this fiduciary role ask you to be very independent maintain the good faith or work in a trust with the manner maintain the trust on behalf of shareholders practically you may tend towards managers then sometimes this task is also needed by maintaining the uh, uh, independence so therefore depending on your uh, jurisdiction you have to decide uh, whether your directors are supposed to engage or do executive things 
who hold executive powers or supervisory roles. If your directors are given executive powers, that means your orientation is you expect more from directors to perform as managers, executives. You do not want them to be uh, kind of supervisory, uh, to be in supervisory cap capacity. So different. Sometimes you want to have a balance. Some directors are executive, some directors are not non-executive. So sometimes your director boards in some very controversial high level corporations, uh, public corporations, all the members may be independent board of directors, then huge um, uh, independence may be maintained. It, it depends. And, um, theoretically, you can explain uh, that independence is good, but practically, uh, different situations may arise. Then we quickly look at the types of directors, inside and outside directors. Inside directors are directors who closely work with managers. Therefore, they are going to be executive. They hold some powers of doing day-to-day -day business. Outside directors perform a kind of independent role uh, not really um, symbolically honorary role, but they, they, they bring their own expertise, but as independent directors, they come from the outside. To great extent, they are nominated by either major shareholders or maybe by strategic or any other relationship, no matter how it is. So, so that is another exercise or the research to test how directors are really appointed, eh? really appointed. So that, that is the difference. Then the executive and non-executive, as the word suggests, executive means those directors or directors with powers, executive powers to manage the system. They are non-executive, they don't. So our um, code of governance uh, tells us, gives some guidance to maintain certain proportion between non-executive directors and executive directors in order to assure that um, independence and trustworthy and the fiduciary role are uh, really respected by the board of directors to safeguard the interest of uh, other stakeholders. Independent and dependent. Independent means um, uh, under what circumstances you are going to be independent. Even in your day-to-day -day life as an individual, if you take so, under what circumstances can you be independent? Because you, you cannot be independent from anything if you have any interest attached with something. Husband cannot be an independent representative for wife. So you have connects even though there is no financial. But here in the, the case of directors, the case of directors, this independency and dependency is defined in terms of financial interest. Financial interest. So if you have um, some shares, mainly, mainly, then you are not independent. But you can be a non-executive because you don't have executive powers, but you hold, you own 1,000 shares. Therefore, you are not independent or you have very close family ties with the manager of this company, then you are not independent. So therefore you can understand very carefully. Dependency or the independence is questioned or assessed in terms of your ability to work independently without having any association, in any bindings, any association with the other party. Some directors called gray directors, they are not seen in Sri Lankan context. Sometimes if you do a research, you can analyze, but this concept is from there, especially this is seen in European countries. Those directors, it is not clear uh, their role. Sometimes it, they appear to be executive directors, sometimes they appear to be non mainly independent people. So not sure whether they are dependent or independent. That is why we call gray directors. Sometimes these people are set um, within the boards. Uh, in other types nowadays, discussions are going on and some practical um, actions have also been implemented in 
some countries they have passed some laws and regulations to uh, bring a gender balance in the boards gender balance some research findings are also there the company's performance are much better come relatively better when gender balance is maintained sometimes when the directors even ceos managers so key positions are held by females so performance are better at least when the gender balance has been assured that is good for the corporation so that some research findings so so we we can discuss anyway there is a discussion in the world uh, about these gender balances and the representativeness when forming boards actually they talk about democracy and social aspects of uh, doing things in a society okay up to now uh, i discuss the very basic foundation of functions and board of directors actually what i really wanted to discuss even more than that unfortunately you are not asking question that is why i happen to limit my scope of talk um that, that's what i wanted to talk much and not these items now we'll go through these specific aspects and see how these actions are connected to the philosophical or theoretical idea of functions of the board in a nutshell these functions would be strategy formulation strategy um, strategy again is a double edged sword this word actually the prominence given for strategy in the present especially in democratic um, business environment an alternative business arrangement in the world is being questioned because strategy um does not something um like stay without having a competition but you can have strategies of achieving some targets uh, even simply disregarding competitors if you examine how the strategy was introduced into business management it came along with the um competition so when we compete right you need to be strategic you need to uh, uh give a shot to others and achieve your targets so therefore you again you can even though that is considered be one of a, a function strategy formulation but you deviate from this traditional mentality of fighting with your competitors and like um, doing any doing nasty things for your competitors in the past even now things are happening but there is a discussion around the world uh, to move away from this uh, traditional um, con conventional type of strategy formulation now new alternative mode of strategies within new supply chain management within blockchains nowadays in future it would be i do not know a matter of uh, just analyzing information and even not taking decision like uh, decisions may be taken by artificial intelligence to great extent uh, through blockchain and all those even currencies we never know in future if governments uh, decide to introduce virtual currencies these fiat fiat currencies would really vanish the roles of uh, private banks even government banks holding money bulk money and accepting deposits and giving loans would be really stale so by a click of one click of a button things can be done nowadays so i don't know these are the things uh, to come to the world in future again i'm not going to talk about these things this can be taken discuss in the strategic management and all those things but unfortunately Uh, i have to mention that fact as well even our syllabus discussion learning we do not touch all those areas we touch only uh, what is written in textbooks and traditional things we need to break it then the policies also in achieving strategies or achieving targets of course policies have to be decided what kind of policies in the past strategies policies actions all those things really uh, um aimed directed 
towards profits, only profit maximization, wealth maximization. Even now, if you just dig into these things and your end objective is profit, 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 the corporation also wants to have profits. But again, that uh, uh, like, um, discussion is there, uh, um, if, um, developments are there, we need to think of others. Profit is not the only driver or the aspect to, uh, uh, to decide policies, strategies, and actions. So owing to the agency, monitoring and supervision is there within the board, of course. And rare, uh, it is not like rare in the sense in Sri Lankan context that uh, responsibility, accountability um, is questionable whether we know accountability well, whether the accountability is respected, whether actions or the legal protections are there for the accountability. If you take these uh, nowadays uh, bo direct board of directors of um, Swarnama, Swarnama, no, not Swarnama, ETA, ETA, right? So some finance company. So the Idris Singh, right? ETA, yes. Um, lots of um, cases are there. They have misused power. Their accountabilities are not held, even once they are accused, they take all the measures they try, either by hook or crew, to get rid from this thing. So a couple of days ago, those directors, accused directors, uh, filed a, pit, a case, case of the petition in the Supreme Court, I suppose, um, seeking an anticipatory bail. But uh, I saw the news today that has been rejected. Well, anyway, so accountability is another a function to be fulfilled, performed by the board of directors. Then the balancing performance on one hand. So you need to support for the managers to uh, come out with the performance. On the other hand, performance roles, like to make sure that things happen in the right way. There are compliance requirements. You need to think of uh, shareholders aspects and all the other requirements should be maintained. That is the supervisory the role. So then it has to be balanced. How directors are going to balance will be discussed. Roles in board committees. Um, why do we need committees? Later we will discuss. So um, at the committee stage. But in a way, within a board, if you are going to develop a committee, it means that you are devolving the power, delegation. You delegate power. Then there should be a necessity, of course. One reason for forming committees is to comply with legal requirement by taking into account uh, the specific significance of that matter. For example, audit committee. Audit committee dates back to this um, um, Sabanese Axel uh, uh, Law and this Enron debacle. There are cases like this where uh, all auditors, managers, directors go together through um, collusion, uh, misuse, uh, uh, misappropriated lots of public funds. As a result, they talk about these, the, the significance and importance of audit committees. So therefore the audit committee comes as a result of these uh, special cases. That is one, like uh, there are the cases we'll discuss. And some committees, board might think that, okay, in order to do these things, so I can't do. So maybe we can't take the responsibility as a single board, we better appoint a separate committee. Like we are appointing separate committees in government, like, day-to-day -day activities. To do that, even if you take FMA, FMA has, may have different committees to look at education, maybe public um, engagement, uh, guest lecturing, likewise. Just to um, smooth, facilitate your function. Then the last one is the corporate transparency. So this is a big area. I don't know to what extent we can go. Big area in the sense that we can discuss. In real applications, I don't know whether a corporation would like to go for this. The confirmation and the performance roles already discussed. The, what we expect from board of directors is not to be biased towards uh, one aspect, but to maintain a balance between that would assure on one hand performance and on the other hand, other requirement, uh, conformant, uh, conformant requirements. And um, this uh, um, figure helps you to like it's, we should not um, 
apply these things um, as um, hard and fast rules, but all the actions um, or the functions of a board can be mainly uh, put into these four quadrants, providing accountability, the holding up accountability. So board of directors is going to be accountable for things that they do. And strategy formulation. So where we are going to be after 10 years, five years, likewise, strategical landmarks. And monitoring and supervising in the journey of achieving targets or reaching vision, mission, and all these things, the board of directors will have to monitor and supervise the managers. And even within the strategies and organizational vision, mission, you need to develop detailed policies as well, individual policies. What is the environmental policy? What is the policy uh, of using um, raw materials, local or imported? Then uh, virgin material or uh, um, recycled material. There is a, a huge debate about this virgin material and um, recycled material. If you want, you can do a research. In other research area, always when we talk about uh, new ideas for research may pop up. You better write them down and later explore. If you go to the industry, you may see uh, many people talk about um, recycled, uh, recycled uh, materials. Uh, from environmental friendly and as perspective. So everybody uh, agrees with that. If you do not know much, right? So if I ask you to raise your hands, so you, do you want to go for recycling or virgin use of virgin? So if you just go for use of virgin, so material, uh, so lots of resource depletion, natural uh, environmental issues and so many things that we like, we might say, yes, so better to go for recycling. So that's a good idea. But when you go to real organization manu manufacturing or production processes, they prefer to go for virgin material. Why? The reason is the cost. There are arguments of cost and quality. Some, some may say that there's no difference um, in quality, but <laughs> you can't simply disregard the cost factor. You can't simply disregard cost factor. Right. Time is running very fast. I'll try to close it up. But it's boring because you don't ask question. It's one way of communication. And so then the company board it, it's the duty, the function of the board to decide the policy about use of material, either virgin or recycled, pure virgin, pure recycled, or combination of these things, and what ratio, and on what, because it should not be just because of simple imagination or the ideas pop up in the uh, heads of the directors based on, based on some, some uh, rational reason. Rationally, directors have to take decisions. So likewise, we can group them. Um, these things may go towards outward looking um, situation or inward looking with respect to hope or past and present focus, whether we are looking at the present situation or past or future focused orientation, future orientation. And for example, if you are highly future focused and outward looking, yes, then your weightage on strategy formulation would be high. Nonetheless, these things should be approved and work with um, and through CEO. So board of directors cannot fulfill these functions on their own as the CEO and managers also cannot do or fulfill their functions on their own. Always cooperation between confirmers and between um, managers and uh, board of directors should be there. Strategy formulation. Um, I quickly go through. I don't know if that was like 
assuming that now you are in the process of strategy formation, what, what would be the strategy? Maybe um, the strategy to be the number one exporter of certain product in Sri Lanka. So in order to achieve this target, different strategies have uh, um, product diversification is introduced, product development is going to be introduced, logistic arrangements likewise, different things should be taken into account within which these are the steps. Process of generating and relieving alternative loan term directions to achieve the purpose of the corporation. Right? To achieve that task, alternatives may be there. Your task is to, before for uh, implementing or form formulation your strategies, you need to assess or evaluate all your then make sure whether the firm is heading in the right direction. All the time, you need to check whether organization deviate from the um, main path. Who is responsible for form formulating strategies? Board of directors or managers? Generally, many might say yes, sometimes maybe board of directors or managers, but the key responsibility is held with the board of directors. But of course, board of directors cannot do that alone without the support of the management. Then some strategies formulated can be expressed or for this purpose, use different techniques. And these are only very few. You can Google and find out more. There is no hard and fast rule that these are the strategy um, formulation process, tools and techniques that we should use. You can use any. So some for long range planning or holistic planning, um, likewise. Normally, this long range planning, three to five. Some organizations, together with the support of technology, have rolling plans for five year, 10 years, some even 30, 50 years. So as long as artificial intelligence is there, you, you have to spend lots of time until uh, you establish that planning template in the first place for 50 year plan. So sometimes you may counter argue that there's no point of planning for 50 years because things would change in future, mainly due to technology. Of course, yes, all right, all right. Um, but you can plan by leaving uh, a room for change. All the time, plans are not going to be rigid. So sophisticated plans with the support of technology helps, they are flexible helps to bring revisions very often, sometimes daily revision, monthly revision, weekly revision. Likewise, you can revise it simply by a keying something in your computer. The sort analysis is a very um, old, but still um, practically useful analysis. You may ask and you may wonder why short analysis because we learn these things uh, all the time even now we talk actually there are many variations in the short analysis short analysis provide a very basic foundation it's like a generic uh, analysis the basic analysis of organizational uh, strength weaknesses opportunities and threats and based on that you can formulate your strategies Therefore, it provides a foundation for strategy formulation. Five forces model is only one models, one of the models used by corporate managers. Uh, don't think that that is uh, the model which is good above other models. No. Why then you should ask question? Why then why do we use five forces model? Not the, other. the reason is. Uh, five forces model is a little bit, um, how to say, um, familiar with managers and easy to formulate things. 
easy to um, incorporate numbers into the model, five process model. So owing to these practical reasons, five process model, Michael Porter's five process model is also discussed. Uh, again, the strategies taken based on the five forces model are linked to the competition. Another one is the resource-based uh, theory approach. Of course, it goes along with resources that you have for status quo and the, to get the maximum use out of your resources, mainly two words like efficiency and effectiveness are discussed under this resource based theory approach. And uh, another area in strategy formulation, you may have heard about vision, mission, values, all those things. Again, it also has become another uh, symbol for corporations. So you may have a vision, mission, values, and all those things. But when you do the businesses, you simply disregard all these things. So you need not to worry. Because since we wanted to have a mission, mission, and all those things we had, had it, we wrote them, we like uh, uh, keep them in our profile books and all. But when you do the business, do the business either by hook or crook and earn profit. That's what matters. Need cash flows. So you don't have to worry. So it's some debate is there about mission, mission, and all these things. But in theory, uh, in a little speaking manner, whenever you formulate strategies, actually, you have to align your strategies according to vision, mission, and all this. But maybe in the next um, century, maybe even within the 21st century, vision, missions, corporate values, all those things would uh, change. It depends. It's, it's, it depends on our choice. If you want to change this thing from a very broader uh, uh, cooperative perspective, collective perspective, of course, these things would change. As of now, most of the mission, visions, uh, corporate values, directions are from individualistic perspective, individualistic perspective. But nevertheless, we need to make use of them in um, developing uh, form or formulating strategies. Then inspire employees, like um, even in strategy formulation, functions of board and everywhere we talk about employees, but uh, their involvement in decision-making, strategy formulation, and all these things uh, is very less. Even employees, in cases where employees engage in strategy formulation, actually top managers representing the employees will take part. And other employees, lower level, middle level, they are not given an opportunity, even though they have tacit knowledge about the organization and businesses, strategy formulations, it's unlike, it depends on the organizational structure. Most of the traditional organizational structure so do not uh, encourage and allow employees to uh, give a big contribution for strategy formulation. And some organization, they might take uh, customers as well. <clears throat> Opportunities are there. It also we practice in different way, customer feedback, all those things, but we do not know, but you, you can check in a research with a customer feedback, customer's concerns are entertained in taking real decisions, maybe an empirical study, uh, case-based research, or, or you, you can do a qualitative research. I'm not going to read out these mission statements. You better leisurely, uh, maybe we can take one. Uh, say general electric, we bring good things to life. It's very broad when we uh, um, think of, but the vagueness also can be there, but it covers a broader picture about what they are going to do. We bring good things to life. What is good thing would be question like, again, interpretation would be there. So then whatever the uh, electrical equipment that they manufacture, the good may refer to quality or usefulness, functionality, something like that. Now you can understand that these statements, either vision, mission, and all those things um, do not play something like a foundation. It really 
helps you to decorate and guide your strategy's actions. That's what it says. Yeah, would these mission statements help in making a strategic decision? Yes, uh, to some extent. So it, it would help. So therefore the quality to life. So you, you can think like therefore need not to move towards other electrical equipment, maybe the household electrical equipment likewise. So very good. Um, you, you can read them. I'm not going to read these uh, international uh, vision and mission statements. What you are supposed to do is, if you like, maybe doing research as well, explore some vision, mission statements of Sri Lankan companies as well. But with that caution, what is the caution? Don't be unnecessarily uh, be um, submerged with these mission statement and mission statement because in substance, nothing would come out from these things. It depends on real practices in Sri Lankan context. They, they have become symbolic symbolics only. If you go to public organizations, uh, if someone wants, you can do a research. Take public organizations and analyze their mission statement, vision statement, corporate values, goals, and uh, compare what they have done in a couple of years, maybe last five years. So there is a greater chance that there could be a significant disconnect between what hope this is, these institutions were doing and what they have uh, what they showcase in their vision and mission statements. So that would be a very good qualitative research. Then I hope I need not to talk about this uh, five forces model um, because you may have come across this thing everywhere. Again, the idea is whenever you use five forces model, nothing comes to your mind, the competitiveness. As long as the competitiveness is there, uh, directors can use this model to formulate their strategies. There are also some common uh, strategies, the, the, the warning for the learning purposes, examination purposes, um, you, you, you can think, okay, th these are the strategies and this is how it should be done, five forces model. But in real life, uh, real organizations, when you engage with present challenges, so biggest challenge nowadays, the COVID-19, huh? among other challenges, other problems created by the capitalism, market economic model, the COVID-19 um, created another big challenge. How are we going to overcome this? There may be a wide array of uh, courses of actions that corporations can do. But if you take two extremes, two extremes, one extreme is that the corporation can be further opportunistic, further opportunistic and um, accumulate wealth within them. So you, what you see in Sri Lankan context is this. Even in, in highly uh, um, problematic situation, crisis situation, so selected people try to screw general public and earn money. Even someone can check or question about uh, the, the business or this drama about the vaccination. vaccination. Even how big uh, drug uh, companies are connected to this. Is it purely with an intention of um, getting rid from this problem or to make use this as an avenue for them to earn uh, fancy profits? So big issues are there. Even local medicine, like um, though we have lots of opportunities to come out with indigenous medicine, so scientific um, approaches are not there support is not there. So we want to come out with some medical prescriptions saying that this works, that and this, this is how this Dhammika Panya also came out. 
So it's a very pathetic situation in Sri Lanka without questioning now the government really uh, patronage these kind of things. I do not know where the, uh, the entire country is heading towards. So it's really submerged in the myth. So nevertheless, so that, what I'm telling you, we, we can't touch all those things if you simply go to a frame like this. That's why I just wanted to tell you. Anyway, understand this. So normally um, we take this broad industry-wide, narrow scope, low cost and product uh, service uh, uniqueness. So likewise, cost leadership strategy, differentiation strategy, focus strategy, and focus strategy, low cost and differentiation likewise. So they are traditional uh, strategies. <coughs> and then the board of directors uh, need to be aware of these things um, when they contribute for strategy formulation. I'm not going to talk about the key aspect because our task, my task is not to talk much about the five forces model, but the roles of directors. Policies, rules, systems, and procedures. And policy making, like uh, in the uh, performance side, to support for the performance, you need to develop uh, strategies. Within the strategies, you need to have policies. Therefore, policies are coming within the strategies, rules, system, procedures, and likewise. So, need not to go through all, but not uh, uh, policies are not limited to only this. It would, be, but whenever we have a policy, it is the responsibility of the board of directors to make sure that the organization adheres to those policies. If those policies implemented, adopted are not suitable, again, it is the responsibility of the board of directors to revise it. They are not supposed to um, simply deviate from the policies without revising. They have to revise them first. Now, up to now, we discuss about this performance role that is policy making and strategy making. Now, the supervision and monitoring task is the conformation uh, role. So that is advisory capacity. Primary tool is financial measures and accounting systems to make sure that these things uh, are in order, systematic things have been established, financial statements are prepared in that way, adequate facilities have been provided, responsibilities have been delegated accordingly, and controls have been established likewise. And controls not only established and they are practiced. Sometimes there may be control controls implemented and proposed, but only in documents, not may not be in use. And all the time, a director's response, one of the responsibilities should be there to review with what they promise. So that, that is lacking not only in cooperation in the government as well. So if um, responsible organizations intellectuals or citizens come forward and question all the governments against uh, what they do, against what they promised. There could be uh, eye opening situation. All the governments could be held responsible for not making promises or deviation because we do not compare with your own plan. The organization also, you may come out with strategies and five year plan, 10 year plan. So maybe simply sleeping in the CEO's drawers or manager's drawers. So you run the business day to day and think of um, short term profit maximization, simply disregarding these things. So one of the key roles of the board of directors is to compare your real performance against your strategies, budgets, plans, and simply speaking, revision and review and revision, review and revision process. exception reporting is common thing you may have heard about it. That means board of directors do not go through all the reports. They don't have the time. Exception manage or management by exception is a technique 
where a board of directors pay attention only on exceptional things. Um, another area, control systems. ROI, ROE, customer satisfaction. You, you can deploy many devices there. Uh, you can monitor. Some of these tools may not reveal the realities, but always it is good to be in touch with these things. Uh, to great extent, customer satisfaction traditionally we measure maybe by taking their perception in questionnaire or maybe in any feedback form. So it doesn't work. Because second process, uh, the, uh, um, what you call procession should be there. Once you engage customers in your business processes, follow-up action should be there. Then only customers would feel that their interests, their ideas, their views are taken care of by the corporation. And they may come forward and provide more to the entity. Um, then the market share, project performance, and the succession planning is another important role of board of directors that is also missing some. In documents, you may see, if you go through all the annual reports of big companies in Sri Lanka, you see this succession planning. Succession planning is connected with HR development as well, human capital development as well. How this board of directors and key management positions are filled over time when the others retire, or maybe resign likewise. So you need to have a very strong succession plan to take up all those positions. If that is not there, what happens? Some managers, those who have tacit knowledge, uh, more competencies, and they may leave the organization, all of a sudden, there may not be over someone to take it uh, and maintain the status quo. So that is problematic in most organization. So one of the tasks of the board of directors is to, one of the uh, important tasks is that succession plan. Then capacity building and professional development is also matters. Again, we know it. You also have word about, you have also engaged in professional development, but again, another problematic area, if you like, you can do a research. Why I am saying most of professional development programs are carried out without consulting, without addressing the needs of the trainers or those who take part in these programs. They come from top, top decides and or they do these things for the namesake. We might say that we carried out professional development program, 10 professional development program in the year. So what you want is only participants. You do not worry whether the participants uh, took something back home the participants are happy. So only feedback for like it is another uh, uh, problematic and debatable area, but uh, in real corporate management, board of directors is supposed to do this. Other thing, product development and social responsibility, again, controversial and debatable in what, of course, directors are socially responsible, why? They represent mainly shareholders. And now the scope of these responsibilities has uh, um, really jumped out from the traditional business world and it has gone to environment, society, ethics. So you need to be highly concerned about this, especially these uh, social responsibilities, inequality in the society, gap between rich and poor. In the recent report, a uh, special speech given by the managing director, director of IMF, Kristalina Georgieva. Actually, I, I just you know, um, um, perceive her as a character uh, of um, addressing the world issues uh, from a pragmatic uh, perspective, uh, instead of uh, simply fulfilling the role of IMF compared to other uh, managing directors of IMF. So she is highly concerned about these issues. She highlights uh, in the recent uh, speech, especially uh, within this COVID uh, situation, what is more likely to happen is that there would be a, a situation of broadening the gap between rich and poor, especially within and among countries, even within the countries and among countries. 
poor developed countries would be more poorer and rich countries developed countries would be richer and richer. even within the developed and poor countries there would be another uh, uh, huge gap between that is one of the major problems that we are facing is proposed and these things also accountability aspects um, accountability level of reporting constitution of the firm laws under which firm has been incorporated demands of a regulating authorities and all those things actually um, uh, board of directors can fulfill its response uh, accountabilities by doing this by doing this so if you uh, can assure that you do all these things on time without fail that means you have fulfilled your accountability but in case that the accountability has not been uh, respected there should like the, the legal provisions are there in the Co Co companies act to hold those directors who are uh, responsible for these things. So they can be held accountable. And this one already we discussed this is the balancing the board of uh, efforts. Uh, these are the things that we discussed, performance role, strategy and policy making, conformance roles, monitoring, supervision and accountability. I think now it is eight. Um, let, let me, if possible, we can move, just discuss the board of committees and move to the presentation. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Next week also, I will discuss about the next um, session that is risk management need not to finish all the slides, but up to now, what I wanted was to establish a very good foundation of uh, foundation for you guys to understand the nature and structure of a corporation and the need and purpose of a board. And then you can think more uh, about practical issues and even find lots of research issues. Now, moving uh, down, like coming down to a level of uh, uh, board committees. There are two purposes of um, having committees. Number one is to enable independent directors to meet separately um, from the board as a whole in order to fulfill their oversight roles. So to perform an oversight role such as independent, like mm, what do you call audit committee, nomination committee, and remuneration committee. So they, they, they look at this thing from different perspective, highly independent perspective. Why? In a corporation, three things are matters. That is why these three committees have been made compulsory in best uh, um, a code of uh, corporate governance practices. What is that? Number one is the audit committee. If you can keep the audit committee independent, internal audit committee, not we are not talking about external. So there are problems with external auditors as well. You guys also work in audit firms as auditors. We know that is not your own problem, not the problem of your own audit company. It is a problem of the socio-economic and political uh, context. Context. So where independence is simply disregarded. So okay, so that is a different issue. I'm not going to talk in detail, but. In principle, if you want, you can have a very good, strong, independent audit committee within the organization. Actually, the responsibility of such an independent body, audit committee, is to uh, make sure that nothing would happen within our corporation which is detrimental to stakeholders, including shareholders. That is the purpose. They can do this thing, only they are kept independent. So they can be independent if they are appointed within a board and they, the board of the board members are purely uh, um, consist of uh, independent non-executive directors and with 
uh, required expertise as well. Sometimes you may be independent, you are non-executive, but you don't have adequate expertise. Then there is no use. That is number one purpose. Good count. Second one is, as it was earlier explained you, the tasks and responsibilities really cast upon board of directors would be very high and um, enormous. The best way to perform or uh, to increase the efficiency is to delegate your power and responsibility. For that purpose also, you can have any number of committees. So there are, oh, there are two types of committees. One is to assure something, make sure certain things, in principle, allowing directors to uh, perform, carry out independent tasks to oversight to as uh, uh, oversight roles to make sure or assure the interest of all the parties. Second one is to improve the efficiency and the performance of the organization by delegating tasks. Few committees, quickly we can go through audit committee. Uh, so I just forgot to tell you earlier, three committees. Number one is the audit committee. Then it takes into account all the serious matters pertaining to this uh, uh, conflict of interest, related party transactions. And all those things are taken into account. Whether anything helps to pass unnecessary benefits to few at the expense of many. Second one is the remuneration company. Remuneration is another critical issue. I do not know whether Sri Lankan authorities or Sri Lankan business committee communities um, have taken this as a serious issue or not. As a result, if you do not have a very good remuneration policies within an organization, nowadays, actually value in an organization, even in the past also, value in an organization is normally created with the contribution of all the stakeholders within an organization, mainly employees working at different capacities. Therefore, it is much more just if you can uh, distribute these benefits or the value created within an organization in a fair manner. But what happens? What evidence do we have? The evidence that we have throughout the world, not only in Sri Lanka, only if you take a large amount of the benefits or the value created in an organization, either as perks or in any other forms of remuneration and any other form of benefits. But they sometimes they do not contribute. They sometimes contribute very little. Those who contribute immensely on the value creation may not be given the benefits. So that could be settled or addressed by having a very good remuneration committee, especially within the top managers. So top managers are the people, they take these perks and benefits. It does not talk about employees, salaries and remuneration. So therefore, remuneration committee, uh, if they work objectively, if they respect these philosophical ideas, if they respect those um, just principles, ethical values and all those things, of course, they have to work in that way. But even though we have remuneration committees, I don't think that they observe all these principles to great extent. So otherwise, we can't have such situation because if you see the gap between uh, top CEOs and ordinary employees salary, it's huge. Sometimes thousand times, thousand times, unacceptable. That's it. Then the nomination committee. Then nomination committee deals with nomi uh, uh, just providing names to board of directors and top managerial position because finally they are the people who take the steering wheel uh, in the company's journey. That is with power. It has to be done with due care and caution. If it is given to known people, family members, your friends, so that would be real problematic. Actually, that is what is happening, right? So it's given to your known people, your friends, family members, those who have uh, any connection with. So it's less likely that opportunities would be given to talent people, competent people, educated people to a great extent, especially top position, because these are the places where you can get most, lots of benefits on one hand, on the other hand, to contribute to the cooperation greatly. So they, they are there for, as I remember, um, three compulsory committees, and even governance and compliance committee, ethics committee, uh, likewise, 
you can have so many other committees mainly these committees are to get in line of providing independence purpose just to achieve the purpose number 1 to provide um, uh, oversight from an independent point of view here to bring uh, to improve the efficiency by delegating the power executive committee finance committee planning committee risk management head of committees folks likewise you may name you, you can have any number of committees um, as you like and as long as it's not detrimental and the cost can be uh, borne by the corporation and the history for the audit committee goes back to cadbury report you uh, i want you guys to read uh, some maybe next week when you come you, you can talk a little bit about this cadbury report recommendation in 1992 sarbanes oxley act a little bit uh, connected with this and uh, run debacle uh, standing committee and with independent directors less with the external auditors internal auditors and likewise so it has a history and this is these are the tasks now um, that are expected from the audit committee to uh, play a role an independent role as directors to less uh, in addition to less with external auditors and even internal auditors and the board to make sure that organization um, does the right thing for the benefits of all the stakeholders i think uh, with that um, yeah i'll this keep up maybe next week we'll discuss nomination committee and some research findings you better go through all these slides i'll just take quite 10 minutes next week and so these are not um, big things some research finding so reported balance of time spent by board of directors may change it so it's only a perception survey It does not hold any concrete um, ideas, but to get um, some um, views. So what we could not discuss about this corporate transparency. This also matters nowadays, especially in an environment. Now we should not forget the fact that now we live in a uh, what do you call ICT. Um, not only ICT, even it has just uh, um, grown up to other areas. even bio the medical engineering and all so in a very technological world in a technological world transparency can be easily achieved easily achieved but not only corporation so no agents are willing unless there would be situation like there are there could be i don't say that no agent but in most of the cases agents in public corporations agents in government uh, agencies institutions pretty much like to kick the transparency out but on the other hand they just love to embrace technology just to claim the importance of technology integration that and this but they never use it including artificial intelligence so in future artificial intelligence would be the talk of the town in future why because artificial intelligence is inevitable that's there your data is stored and algorithm will tell uh, you what you are uh, who you are what you are and your desires and all those things to great extent either you like it or not so most of decision would be taken by artificial intelligence but who controls it who has the control of artificial intelligence? whether this artificial intelligence is going to be used for the benefits of everyone in a firm and or for the benefit of handful of corporation for example now to see in the internet uh, compared to the past nowadays you just rank the big co corporations all top maybe 10 20 corporations are it giants starting from amazon and all apple so they are very big because of what because of technology they use algorithm they use artificial intelligence So anyway that is a different story but you can think of because i'm why i'm telling these things you can make use of these things for your research idea i am not teaching only this um, corporate governance aspect so i take the opportunity 
for you guys to think critically because this is the last year so these subject specific matters can be taken or learned from the internet anywhere so without having my help you google and find all those things without having my support my support is much more needed i believe to develop a kind of um, um, intellectual discourse uh, to bring about something better to the society that can be done to uh, to some extent can be achieved when you do a particular research therefore when you do a research i really urge everyone to think of doing a very good research um that that might help you to look at issues from a critical perspective critical perspective okay with that what i just want to tell you with respect to this transparency even though the possibilities are there for the corporation and public agencies to use the transparency to great extent it is unlikely that they are going to use it we'll see how best we can deal with this so with that i will stop today's lecture anything that i could not talk would be discussed next week if you have any question you can ask now it is the time so i um, stop the lecture and give the opportunity for presentation for well, first 15 minutes for the uh, group number 1 to present about present the case number 1 so hope you you have been given the guidelines i will follow the guidelines then i'll stop the um, screen sharing uh, lots of question have been asked so i will look into these questions later so we we'll look at so i'll stop this